Good afternoon, everybody. We are back from our afternoon recess. Um, before we get started in the public hearings, I uh, want to turn it over to Councilmember Ludke. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to request, uh, respectfully request that I be added as a co-sponsor to item number D on the consent calendar from this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first item on the public hearing schedule for today is uh, is a, a resolution to approve amendments to the comprehensive water supply and water sewer systems plan water sewer category change request a t and &E committee work schedule uh, work session is scheduled for march 6th uh, those wishing to testify for the council's consideration must do so before the close of business on march First, there are eight speakers, seven of whom are in person and one is virtual, so I'll call uh, four who are up uh, in, who are here joining us. Uh, Ms. Catherine uh, Nelson, uh, Gilbert Terrier, um, Sharish Parikh, and Peter Doherty. Okay, Ms. Nelson, you have three minutes. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Katherine Nelson for the Montgomery County Planning Board. Last Thursday, the board um, took up the seven cases within this November 2022 group of category change requests to review them for consistency with the area master plans and the guidance within them. The board received information from both the planning staff and the executive staff and had the following comments or recommendations. For the Seek Heritage Trust, the Planning Board recommended to deny S3. For the Maisel property, also to deny S3. For the Arthur Eisenhower property, deny S1. And for the Sine, Rayo, and Reinhold properties, the board recommendation was to defer S3 pending the state's concurrence with the 2022 update of the water and sewer plan. Finally, the Shevitz property, the planning board recommendation was to defer S3 pending development of an annexation agreement for the property with the city of Rockville. The planning board voted unanimously uh, for these recommendations and they were in agreement with the planning staff, with the executive staff, and uh, with the speakers that spoke before the planning board at this hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Terrier. If you could move the mic closer to you and turn it on. Uh, right below, Sorry. there you go, perfect. Sorry, just learning by doing. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at this stage, I would uh, only say that uh, with respect to the request by the Sikh Heritage Trust Fund, uh, we uh, uh, fully support the recommendation of the board and we uh, oppose the request. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Mr. Parikh. Turn your microphone. <coughs> there we go. Uh, good afternoon, President, and good afternoon, uh, Council. I'm Shirish Parikh, resident of uh, uh, 11720 Woodthrush Lane. And uh, regarding, this is my, I guess, uh, verbal testimony regarding the sewer category change request. Uh, first of all, I fully support uh, the denial uh, from, uh, from the, the, the Planning Commission and uh, uh, really concerned about the negative impacts of this uh, contemplated sewer request. Uh, as you know, we are one of the two options that uh, that was originally suggested in the the proposal, and uh, we um, we are option two and have granted the applicant no easement uh, to run sewer system between our our, our properties, and uh, I have several concerns around environment. Uh, me and my wife both uh, several concerns around environment removal of more than sixty trees, and also. Uh, you know, the, uh, we are on a slope where if this permission is granted, the storm water would be running uh, through our property, disrupting the ecosystem. 
And then finally, our land sits on uh, uh, forest preservation, and there are uh, three foot tall pillars all behind our house on our property that we have meticulously preserved for last 12 years since we've been the residents. Uh, and, 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 and that would uh, be a huge disruption to that forest conservation preservation that's part of our, uh, our property. So again, uh, very much opposed to the sewer category change in support of the uh, Planning Commission's uh, uh, recommendation not to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Darley. Uh, thank you for hearing my testimony today. I'm here urging you to approve the sewer category changes for what I believe are items 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in your transmittal packets. That's the three properties on Carriage Court and the two on Fox Den. I and my neighbors requested a septic survey that covered most of these properties. Our existing septic systems were built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s before modern standards. DEP has told us that they are likely to fail in the near future. Because we are concerned about the environmental and health dangers of failed septic, we are encouraged our neighbors to submit these applications. That DEP survey showed that these properties are constrained. The constrained term for DEP means that the land is not suitable for replacement septic systems and the existing systems are more likely to fail. They need a solution. We ask your support to make that happen. Beyond the DEP's determination, there are other considerations. When the three applications involving the Rockville Expansion Zone were submitted in late 2021, they did conform with the Potomac Peripheral Policy and the Water Sewer Plan then in effect. A revised 2022 plan, as was Nelson mentioned, changed the text specifically to target these properties in the Rockville Zone. But a WSSC design concept on page 20 of your packets shows a connection directly to WSSC's system avoiding Rockville. These applications should have been grandfathered. This is the second time we have faced retroactive change in policies. We requested that septic survey in October of 2017. On page 11 of your packets, the DEP states that the Council passed a revised policy in 2018, but the Council also directed that our 2017 survey, quote, had to conform with the requirements of the revised policy even though DEP and DPS had initiated the survey prior to the Council's approval of the 2018 update. How are we, and for that matter, the DEP, supposed to play by the rules when the rules keep changing? In the case of the Fox Den properties, the distance from an existing sewer main is not a valid reason for denial. They have to have a remedy. The fact is that sewer is available on Overly Drive, and a Fox Den property on the corner of Overly was approved for a sewer category change. These property owners could work with that owner to reach the existing sewer main. The halted 2017 survey shows just such a solution. There's no good justification for denial when septic system use is constrained. The denial isn't a solution. It's really time that we had science and engineering solutions to these problems, not political ones. There's a lot of no-growth advocates that are supported by the county executive that have blocked the DEP's ability to fully address these impending uh, health and environmental problems. We don't want growth. Our covenants prohibit subdivision. In fact, the sewer line that I mentioned is right in the middle of our neighborhood. We have a very serious problem, and we need your help to resolve it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your testimony this afternoon. Next, I'd like to bring up uh, Ted Smart, Mary Yakatis, and Suzanne Lee. Mr. Smart, you have three minutes. Uh, hi, I'm Ted Smart. I live at 13200 Cleveland Drive, Rockville. I represent the Greater Glen Hills Coalition, a group of hundreds of property owners in the Glen Hills area who continue to request reasonable sanitary sewer policy. Our coalition supports approval of all six category changes in the Glen Hills area. Four of the six, Carriage Court and Scott Drive, are all being deferred pending state approval of the 2022 Water and Sewer Plan update. But if you had to take action on them today, they would be approved. The Glen Hill study took seven years to make it into the 2018 plan, and then when these people take the time, money, and effort to apply under the rules, the county again pulls the rug out and makes more changes four years later in the 22 plan. 
It's a running theme in Glen Hills. In your council packet on page 11, note the way when a sanitary survey as defined in the 2018 plan was nearly complete, the county just changed the rules to force stopping survey, saying that someone had to stand up and say their septic system had failed before conducting any more or even finishing an ongoing survey. That's crazy. I would announce my septic failure, and I don't think you would either. So with the latest rule changes in the 2022 plan to exclude Rockville from the peripheral policy, how much sense does it make to restrict sewer closer to the city of Rockville than it is to obtain further away? These four applicants, particularly on Carriage Court, have neighbors a few lots away that, that just got approved for sewer. Why does the executive and why would this council want to restrict people from improving their homes and their biggest investment or just to vest their property rights to do so? As for the other two category changes in Glen Hills, Fox Den and Fox Den Court, they should clearly be approved under the peripheral sewer policy. What the executive recommendations do here is to bend the clear definition of the 2018 policy in favor of denial. They somehow say the periphery can't, quote, be within a different subdivision or any other street is simply wrong. The policy does not say that, and it does not say that it's, quote, intended to provide service to properties that are part of a continu contiguous area, end quote. I challenge each of you to, finish, uh, to find this wording in the existing policy. And there is precedent for these two applications under peripheral policy. For both applications, it's logical future extension of gravity sewer within Fox Den Drive. What difference does it make what it would cost the applicants to extend? It doesn't cost the county a dime, only increases tax revenue. And these applicants may only be trying to vest their rights under the existing policy because Lord knows the policies in Glen Hills is forever changing. As for the additional budding properties, quote, outside the sewer envelope, end quote, along the route, if you remember, Chairman Glass, the council just approved an application further out in Potomac creating a policy to extend sewer just a little bit to connect someone outside the sewer envelope by an abutting main so the peripheral policy applicant could have a logical connection. None of the executive's reasons to deny these applications makes any sense or good public policy. Please diligently review and approve these six applications which by the current rules should be approved. I also request that this council support a limited master plan amendment in this year's budget and on park and planning's work plan pursuant to Council Resolution 18423 from the 2016 plan. The TNE committee four months ago seemed to signify their support on this. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Thank you. Ms. Akaitis. Hello. Um, I'm Mary Akaitis. I'm president of the Overly Sewer Consortium. We are a group of property owners that, that succeeded in getting an S3 category change. And, and now we're in the process of installing a lengthy sewer main um, in, in along the south end of Overly Drive. Today I want to step back a little bit and tell you about my personal experience which highlights the applicants needs for your support today. In 2006 the septic system on our property 9513 backed up into our house. We learned it could not be replaced. Then we were denied approval to hook up to an existing sewer line. John and I luckily managed to find a temporary repair for our system, but we've had to limp along with te temporary fix for 17 years using this fragile failing system. We realize that it's polluting Watts Branch Creek, which runs along the edge of our property. And we live in fear every day knowing that our system could back up at any time. A DEP 2013 study confirmed that properties in large parts of the entire Glen Hills area should not be using septic systems. After release of that study, we and our neighbors asked DEP to study conditions on our lots on the southern end of Overly Drive. Results showed that 82% of those studied properties that use septic systems, including my own, would not meet requirements for replacing them. Thirteen of us lucky ones got the needed S3 category changes. Another study which I think Ted and, um, and Peter have talked to you about in Potomac Highlands was stopped under political pressure after results were released to the public showing that virtually all of these properties are unsuitable for septic system use. Today's applicants live in those identified property areas and they deserve your consideration. 
New restrictions effectively eliminate the possibility that new studies such as ours will be undertaken, and I believe you've heard about that. When someone has a documented failure, they, or, or, that's a requirement now, but they can't step forward and claim failures because there are no options available to uh, replace them, their septic systems. Yet, as shown in three existing DEP studies, there's an urgent and identifiable need for sewer service. This afternoon, I'm asking you to put yourself into our shoes. What would you do if the county said your property was hazardous, but denied approvals needed to take care of the problem? You probably couldn't sell the property, or if you're lucky enough to do that, you wouldn't get the value from it. Given the DEP evidence about the scope of this problem, what truly logical reason can you members of the council or and the planning board give us to reject these requests? I'd like to point out that um, deferrals, if granted today, will mean denial because these requests will come back to the council with recommended rejections. You have the freedom to use common sense in making decisions that will help protect our health. Thank you. Today's applicants yeah. qualify for and need relief now to prepare for future system failures. They can't wait till their homes are flooded. Thank, thank you, Ms. Yukaitis. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Lee? Good afternoon. My name is Susan Lee. I live at 12900 Circle Drive in Rockville, and I live in Glen Hills as well. I'm currently the president-elect of the West Montgomery County Citizens Association. West Montgomery is an umbrella citizens association with boundaries that stretch from Beltway to the Ag Reserve, from the CNO Canal to the Serpentine Barrens. Our focus is on protecting the rich environmental resources of the area and encouraging good governance, planning, and zoning that is consonant with the needs of the community. We strongly urge you to adopt the unanimous recommendations of the Planning Board and the County Executive with regard to denial and deferral of these requests. The staff has done an outstanding job analyzing the specifics of each. Their findings and conclusions ensure compliance with the requirements and principles set forth in the Potomac Subregion Master Plan, the 2018 County Water and Sewer Plan, the 2022 update currently pending before the Maryland Department of the Environment, and the Maryland Smart Growth Statutes. Ensuring compliance with these requirements is critical to protecting the low density green wedges throughout the county and in particular the environmental infrastructure of the Potomac subregion. Impervious surfaces and the destruction of sensitive areas increase exponentially with sewer. Smart growth minimizes sewer sprawl and ensures intelligent planning and careful stewardship of scarce environmental and infrastructure resources. All of these properties before you today drain to the Watts Branch, which flows into the Potomac River directly above the water intake at WSSC's Potomac Drinking Water Filtration Plant with a current capacity of 280 million gallons of drinking water a day. The entrance development in the headwaters in Rockville and on the periphery of the subregion and more severe wet weather events has resulted in dramatic increases in sediment load that must be treated by the plant requiring recently a massive upgrade to the plant. Increased impervious surfaces in the intended stormwater runoff even have major impacts on the CNO Canal National Park. At our February meeting, representatives of the Park Service described the major restoration stabilization project that they are undertaking at mile marker 11, just south of Old Anglers, that is necessary in large part because of increased sediment from stormwater runoff from intensive development along the canal, but not on Park Service lands. The Potomac subregion plays a critical recharge role, buffering the Potomac and eventually the Bay from increasing impacts of more intense development in the county. For example, Glen Hills, where most of these requests are from, was specifically studied as part of the master plan process and singled out to remain a low density recharge area outside the sewer envelope. One third of the area is within the Piney Branch Special Protection Area. The remainder is crisscrossed with streams, state protected wetlands, multiple ponds, and a forest track specifically identified in the master plan. And just so, just to update the council, make sure that you ask DEP, there is not one failure in Glen Hills now, not one. 
and Mr. Mrs. Ekaitis has been granted a sewer extension for that entire area. They can have it whenever they want. And also, Mr. Mr. Um, Smart has been granted. He has sewer, he has no problem, and he has it for some additional lots as well. So I just point that out. Right now, there are no problems in Glen Hill. They've been rectified. Th thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Uh, thank you all for your testimony this afternoon. We have one final person providing testimony, and uh, they are virtual. It's uh, uh, Mr. Jonathan Maisel, if you are with us. Mr. Mazel is with us. Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, we hear you. Yeah, hi. Uh, my wife and I own 13120 Fox Den Drive. Uh, contrary to what was stated by the, the previous witness, uh, we haven't been granted a sewer extension, and it is not available to us at any given time. The executive staff made a ne negative recommendation for my category change based on the rationale that my property is not within the Jasmine Hill Terrace subdivision, which are the properties uh, abutting mine, and that therefore, because it's not within the subdivision, it doesn't fulfill the intention of the peripheral policy to fill in the sewage envelope in a logical manner. Uh, I couldn't disagree with this statement more. For all the reasons that the other witnesses said, we've had three studies of the area, including the North Potomac Highlands study that was cut short. But what that North Potomac Highlands study did show was that there are multiple properties along Fox Den Drive that are septic constrained. A grant uh, a, a change of category quest, request for my property would in fact result in sewer service for multiple other properties along Fox Gen Drive that are septic system constrained. This seems to be a very logical way to uh, develop the sewage system outside the existing envelope. It was so logical that on slide nine, of DEP's North Potomac Highlands study, it was listed as one of the two options. Uh, my application for a category change is consistent with the policy and the intention behind the policy, and we would ask that it be granted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meisel. Uh, thank you, everybody, for testifying on this issue today, and now this public hearing is now closed. Item number seven on the agenda. This is a public hearing for the FY 2022 National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System Permit Financial Assurance Plan. A transportation and environment work session, committee work session will be scheduled at a later date. Those wishing to submit testimony for the council's consideration must do so before the close of business on March 7th. We have no speakers for this item, and this public hearing is now closed. Item number eight, this is a public hearing on Bill 723, Consumer Protection Gasoline Station Signage. This bill would define and prohibit certain deceptive trade practices by gasoline stations, require the inclusion of certain supplemental information on state required signage at gasoline stations and generally amend the law regarding deceptive, unfair, or unconscionable trade practices. A public safety and economic development committee work session is scheduled for March 13th. Those wishing to submit testimony for the council's consideration must do so before the close of business on March 6th. We have two speakers for this item. Both are virtual. First, I'd like to call uh, Kirk McCauley. Oh, we Thank see you, we see you and hear you. Yep. yep. Thank you, Chairman and members of the council. My name is Kirk McCauley. I represent WMDA. We represent service stations and convenience stores uh, in Maryland. Uh, I'd like to start off with. No gasoline retailer is out to deceive their customer. Uh, they depend on repeat business. There's a lot of gas stations in Montgomery County, 
and they don't have to stop at one. So no retailer is going to purposely deceive a customer. Uh, they're only trying to give a customer an option. Uh, the, the signs clearly say cash. Uh, if it doesn't say cash, then it's breaking the law and it can, it can be, be taken care of. The, uh, the, the fact is, there's no rationale for, for this law. Uh, gasoline signs are very expensive. Digitals, they run anywhere between $12,000 and $20,000, plus uh, installation and permitting, which is a, a nightmare in itself. Uh, but Maryland gasoline retailers sold two billion three hundred sixty-four million five hundred twenty-six thousand gallons of gasoline last year, and that's all by the motor fuel tax motor carrier um, annual report that can be getting offline. I'll send it uh, before March six. Uh, the using a very liberal sixteen gallons per transaction per fill up at a retail. Uh, gas station, and normally it's closer to 12 to 14, but let's put 16 down. That's 147 million 782,877 transactions, individual transactions at retail. There were 19 complaints registered at Weights and Measures. Weights and Measures, is a, uh, a division of the Agriculture Department. Uh, records all of those. They go out and they talk to the people. N Nineteen. That's all. At, at, out of all of those transactions. The uh, <clears throat> then we've checked with the comptroller's office and they had one complaint. And these were for fiscal year 2022. The last fiscal year we got. So that's one complaint for, for over seven million transactions when you break it down into that. One complaint for over seven million transactions. Uh, clearly, uh, this doesn't need to be a bill. The uh, service stations are just trying to give someone an option. Uh, it's clearly marked cash, and if it's not, I'll be the first one to go ahead and tell them about it. But the, the comptrollers and the uh, weights and measures, the actual enforcer, uh, do a pretty good job at that when they're registered complaints. So, it's very few complaints. Uh, please give this a, uh, an unfavorable report, uh, and I'd be happy to have any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, we'll be joined by uh, Ellen Valentino. Hi. Uh, thank you, and good afternoon. My name is Ellen Valentino. I'm here today representing the Mid-Atlantic Petroleum Distributors, which are owners of convenience stores and service stations, work very closely with um, Kirk McCauley, you know, the industry is very highly re regulated when it comes to price requirements and pump inspections to ensure that customers get the gasoline they pay for. Many would agree that gasoline sales are one of the most competitively sold products. I just have to ask my, uh, 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 my mother uh, on that. She'll cross the street for a penny, but our price is required to be posted on the street. Over the years, signs have changed, pumps have changed, technology continues to evolve, and also that means in which, um, how and which customers um, pay as well. So this bill is a costly bill um, uh, to our industry, and um, we hope that you give it an unfavorable report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for your testimony, and this public hearing is now closed. Item number nine on the agenda is a public hearing on Bill 823, Boards, Committees, and Commissions, Open Meetings, Supplemental Requirements. This bill would require boards, committees, and commissions to publish within certain time frames the dates, times, and locations of meetings, meeting agendas, and meeting minutes, require boards, committees, and commissions to make meeting recordings available under certain circumstances, require the postings of draft meeting minutes under certain circumstances, require certain reporting by the Office of the County Executive to the Council, and generally amend the laws regard regarding boards, committees, and commissions, and regarding open meetings. A Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee work session is scheduled for March 2nd. We have one speaker, that individual is here uh, in person. Nope, that person is no longer testifying. We have no one testifying in, uh, on this item, and so this public hearing is now closed. Next is 
Item number 10. This is a public hearing on Bill 923, Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Advisory Council Rename. This bill would rename the Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Advisory Council to reduce the stigma associated with the word abuse. Replace the word abuse with addiction to better reflect the need to provide access and support for persons afflicted with addictions and generally amend the law regarding alcohol and other drug addictions. A Health and Human Services Committee work session is scheduled for March 9th. Those wishing to submit testimony for the Council's consideration must do so before the close of business on March 2nd. We have no speakers for this item and this hearing is now closed. And that brings us to item number 11 which is the nominations and appointment to the Montgomery County Planning Board. Let me start by making some general comments about where we are and how we got here. A appointing members of the Planning Board is one of the most important functions that we have on the County Council. The Montgomery County Planning Board works to maintain and improve the quality of life for each of our 1.1 million residents. It's a big county and there are a lot of different needs that need to be met. The planning board acts on issues such as growth, transportation, environmental protection, agriculture, historic preservation, and forest conservation. Additionally, we know that the planning board is largely responsible for land use and protecting parkland resources throughout the entire county. And it cannot be understated that these are important roles, critically important roles. So important that last October, the council had an open call for five planning board seats. And for those five seats, we received 128 applications. And we extended our appreciation at the time, and I want to extend it again to everybody who expressed their interest in serving our county and serving on the planning board. And as the council worked through that process, we ended up appointing five individuals. And when we appointed those interim individuals, as they were described, we decided to stagger the terms of those five. So that three would be reappoint a three would be appointed shortly after this council got seated so that this new council with a majority of new members could weigh in on that decision and hold the two additional positions for later in the spring for continuity of work and of knowledge. And throughout that process, through the appointment process, the reappointment process, plans were scrutinized plans were approved and the work continued and I want to express my appreciation for the five members who currently serve on the planning board and also and even more importantly for the members of the planning department staff and for the park staff who recognize that during these turbulent times their work had to go on and their work was critically important and so here we are today appointing three individuals to fill the interim spots. And so I just want to take a minute to thank Ms. Branson, Mr. Hill, and Ms. Presley for quickly and ably jumping into their roles last year when we needed them to, so the continuity of work could continue. Ms. Branson, Mr. Hill, and Ms. Presley have each served our community for a very long time, having served as a former member of the County Council, a former member of the Rockville City Council, and a former member of the planning board itself. And so each of them have long tenures of helping and serving and dedicating, and I appreciate them. And so when we sent out a call for the three positions, one a Democrat, one a Republican, and one an independent, uh, we received 27 applications. And I again want to thank everybody who expressed their interest then. And as this new council got seated, we decided to change and update and modernize some of our operations and procedures. And so what we'll be undertaking right now is a new procedure for the county. 
for the county council as it relates to planning board nominations. Um, there will be multiple nominations that can be made from the floor. And we will engage in a thoughtful conversation about the support for future members of the planning board. Um, but there will be multiple nominations that can be brought to the floor, which is a change from the way it has been over the last number of years. And so with that set up to where we are today, my appreciation for where we've been over the last few months, uh, I will open it up for a, call of, for a call of nominations amongst my colleagues. And we'll start with the Democratic candidates who have put themselves forward. Right, Council Vice President Friedson. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for acknowledging all the work of the interim board. I share in that appreciation, as I know all colleagues do. Um, and I'm pleased that we have this new process uh, with which to work, which I think is uh, more transparent and will provide us an opportunity to uh, move forward with some great uh, candidates. And with that, uh, it is with uh, great enthusiasm that I nominate James Hedrick to fill the expiring Democratic seat on the Montgomery County Planning Board. Uh, our county is in a significant period of transition and transformation, and it is more important than ever to have the right people on the planning board with the skills and background to meet the challenges and opportunities before us as a community and as a county. I believe that James Hendrick is the right person for this moment and at this time. We are all well aware that our county faces a significant housing crisis. Affordable home ownership is becoming more and more elusive and increasing numbers of our residents in Montgomery County, as well as residents across the region, are rent burdened. As a member of the planning board, Mr. Hedrick would bring knowledge and experience on housing issues that we desperately need if we were to tackle this issue head on, as I believe we desperately need to do. James Hedrick is an advocate of sustainable transit-oriented growth and also engaged at the neighborhood level as an active member of his neighborhood community association. He understands the imperative to expand our transit infrastructure and the need to build and support compact, walkable communities. And he has a unique background in financing and producing affordable housing with public-private partnerships. His work as a financial an analyst will also serve him well on the board in terms of understanding complex issues like pro formas and financing, uh, and in his significant background uh, working uh, with a public housing agency. Colleagues, I believe James Hedrick brings a well-rounded background uh, and will offer energy and vision that we need on the planning board, and I hope you will join me in supporting him for this very important appointment. Councilmember Katz. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I would like to second that, and I'd also like to say that this, these decisions, not just for this one, but for every one that we're going to be discussing today, are very difficult decisions because each and every person who we interviewed and who we've had the discussions with would certainly make fine members, but I believe Mr. Hedrick, uh, based uh, in agreement with uh, Vice President Freitson, would certainly be the person who I'm going to vote for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilmember Jawando. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, appreciate all the uh, people who applied. Uh, also appreciate the change in process that allows us to have some discussion. Um, uh, I think that it's a good move forward for transparency and for the public, especially since uh, what we've gone through with the planning board. Um, I am going to nominate uh, Cherie Branson. Uh, for this position, uh, who's currently serving in an interim capacity, uh, who, as was mentioned, as a former council member on this body, a uh, former director of Office of Procurement, uh, the f a former chief counsel for the Oversight Committee on Homeland Security on Capitol Hill, and longtime advocate, uh, vice president for the NAACP, uh, very active in our community on a number of boards and commissions, uh, and who has done a good job. Uh, over these last several months in steadying the ship and working with her other interim members uh, to make sure the staff knew that they had their back and uh, be a solid, steady voice uh, that represents uh, a part of our county and community in the eastern part of the county that needs representation on the planning board. Um, and I think uh, we said when we were appointing 
people to the uh, planning board that you could reapply. We had a long discussion about that and, and that this, even though you were interim, you could still reapply and she made it through the process to have the interviews and I think she's done a great job and would continue to do a great job. I will note that she was also, uh, we've see, received several endorsement letters from the former chair of the Ben Fed Committee, our former colleague Hans Riemer, uh, who's an active citizen, which I would have not, uh, would, would expect nothing less from him. Uh, from several members of the District 20 delegation, including the Chair of the Judicial Proceedings Committee, Senator Will Smith, Delegate Janelle Wilkins, uh, and many others in our community. So I, uh, with that, I'd like to move uh, Sheree Branson for this spot. Thank you. Councilmember Sales. And I'd like to second that nomination. I, too, agree with the sentiment shared by my colleague. Um, I've known uh, former council member Sheree Branson for years and have seen her exemplary work across the county and thinks she would be an excellent addition to the planning board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other nominations that would like to be made? Not hearing any, we'll open it up for conversation. Does anybody have any comments they'd like to make? Not hearing any. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Council Member Lukey. So do we just say this is new? So are we yes. just saying who okay. There are two nominations on the floor. Okay. The, the, right. the two nominees are uh, Mr. James Hendrick and Ms. Cherie Branson. Okay, I'm going to vote for uh, Mr. James Hendrick. Council Member Lukey votes Hendrick. Council Member Mink. Cherie Branson. Council Member Mink votes Branson. Council Member Sales. Uh, Cherie Branson, thank you. Council Member Sales votes Branson. Council Member Albernos? Mr. Hendrick. Council Member Albernos votes Hendrick. Council Member Jawando? Ms. Branson. Council Member Jawando votes Branson. Council Member Katz? Mr. Hendrick. Council Member Katz votes Hendrick. Council Member Stewart? Um, Mr. Hedrick, but I would say, and I apologize because I wasn't sure how we were doing this today, that I do want to extend my thanks to Ms. Branson for all her service and that this was a very difficult um, decision to make. But looking um, at the next phase for this planning board, I am going to vote for Mr. Hedricks. Thank you. Council Member Stewart votes Hedrick. Council Member Fanny Gonzalez. I want to echo what my colleague just said, uh, Mr. Hendrick. Council Member Fanny Gonzalez votes Hedrick. Council Member Balcom. Uh, James Hedrick, please. Council Member Balcom votes Hedrick. Council Member Friedson. Mr. Hedrick. Council Member Friedson votes Hedrick. Council Member Glass. Mr. Hedrick. Council Member Glass votes Hedrick. The tally is Cherie Branson gets three votes. James Hedrick gets eight votes. Okay, thank you very much, colleagues. Um, congratulations, Mr. Hedrick. Uh, and thank you, Ms. Branson, for your service on the planning board and for all of your service in Montgomery County. Uh, next, we will open up the floor for nominations to fill the unaffiliated position on the planning board. Is there a nomination? Um, uh, yeah. Councilmember Fani Gonzalez. Um, I am thrilled to nominate <laughs> Ms. Mitra Peroim for the Montgomery County Planning Board. During my seven years as a planning board commissioner and vice chair, Ms. Peroin was a shining star in the management team in charge of her park system. She was a no-nonsense team member who got things done and fully understood the importance of the Maryland National Capital Parking Planning Commission. Mitra Peroin approached problems objectively and with a keen sense of logical solutions without drama. That's why I love you. If there was something that needed attention, Mitra was the go-to person. I was on the planning board the day she retired, and let me tell you, I cried, not because she was leaving us, but because I knew our parks director would be in big trouble without her. Do you know that the saying that behind a successful man, there's a highly intelligent woman? Totally true. Um, in addition, of being competent and knowledgeable about the great importance of the parks system, Mitra has always been sensitive to the community's needs and desires, particularly low income and communities of color. 
Frankly, when I think of Mitra as a former deputy director for parks, I think of my former planning board colleague, Mary Wells Harley, who was, before joining the planning board, she was the parks director in Prince George's County, and as you know, they were by county commission, and they are our sister, right? Um, so the planning board must have someone with deep knowledge of the park system, just like Mary Wells Harley did when she served on the planning board with me. With that, I urge my colleagues to second my nomination and vote in favor of Mitra Pedoin. Thank you, Councilmember Fanny Gonzalez. Uh, Councilmember Stewart. Thank you um, to my colleague, Councilmember Fanny Gonzalez, and I would like to second the nomination um, and just say I'm thrilled to do this. Uh, Mitra, the experience that you would bring to the planning board is um, would be outstanding and something that we really need. Your experience in parks and also your experience um, in permitting, I think, is something that um, we really need uh, to see on the planning board, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Okay, seeing none, nominations are now closed. Are there any comments people would like to make? Uh, Councilmember Albernaz. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I look forward to voting for Mitra. We and I, she and I had the opportunity to work together when I was the director of the recreation department, and she helped design and work on a number of the community recreation centers that we all now enjoy within our community, and her wealth of experience will be invaluable and she won't have a learning curve uh, coming in on a variety of issues which uh, which will be critical. I do want to recognize and thank uh, Mr. Paul Geyser in particular for applying. Uh, Mr. Geyser is somebody who I've known for a very long time um, and the experience that he brought and the help that he provided to us to assist the previous council with the accessory dwelling unit and other issues uh, was, was really critical. Uh, but I look forward to working with Mitra in this capacity moving forward. So with that, I yield back to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And I just want to say um, that I, I too, will, will support uh, Ms. Pedram. And what I think is, is very exciting uh, about her appointment is her deep knowledge of the commission, uh, and in particular, her deep knowledge of the Department of Permitting Services. Because as we work to move through and streamline and cut red tape and make processes more efficient, uh, she will intimately understand those processes. And so I look forward to the future work and collaboration. Uh, Council Vice President Friedson. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just uh, briefly, I didn't really get a chance to do it before, so I wanted to acknowledge uh, Ms. Branson for all of her work, similar to what colleagues uh, have done. Uh, if we had had a discussion, I would have uh, mentioned those comments there and apologize for not doing it at the appropriate uh, time. And similarly, want to uh, note uh, what Council Member Albernaz had mentioned uh, with uh, Mr. Geyser, how incredibly helpful uh, his expertise uh, was during the accessory dwelling unit conversation uh, as uh, a member of the committee along with Council Member Jawando and, uh, and, and then uh, Chair Reamer. We were grappling with these very uh, challenging issues. The, the expertise that he brought to the table and the, uh, the uh, amount of time that he spent was, was hugely valuable. I really appreciate that. And, uh, and Mr. Silverstein is in the room, and I really appreciate uh, his uh, candidacy and his willingness to, to step up and uh, thought uh, put forward a, a very compelling candidacy, made this an extremely difficult uh, uh, decision. Uh, but Ms. Pedouim, I think, brings a breadth of uh, experience uh, in knowing and understanding the inner workings of uh, the Park and Planning Commission and the staff in understanding uh, county government. Uh, in being a very responsive uh, public official and I think is the right person uh, for this uh, important moment as we uh, transition uh, and move forward uh, as a county. And so I'll be uh, very proudly uh, supporting this nomination, but wanted to express my appreciation uh, to all of uh, the candidates for their applications and, uh, frankly, the embarrassment of riches uh, in terms of talent uh, and public engagement that we have uh, in the county that I feel very fortunate to live here. Um, be able to serve on this body. Thank you. I'm not seeing any other comments. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Council Member Lukey. Yes. Council Member Lukey votes yes. Council Member Person Mink. Oh, sorry. I'm it's supposed okay. to say the name. No sorry. <laughs> Ms. <laughs> Pedoim. <laughs> Council Member Lukey votes Pedoim. Council Member Mink. Mitra Pedoim. 
Council Member Mink votes Petoim. Council Member Sales. Ms. Petoim. Council Member Sales votes Petoim. Council Member Albernos. Ms. Petoim. Council Member Albernos votes Petoim. Council Member Jawando. Mrs. Petoim. Council Member Jawando votes for Petoim. Council Member Katz. Ms. Petoim. Council Member Katz votes Ms. Petoim. Council Member Stewart. Ms. Petoim. Council Member Stewart votes Ms. Petoim. Council Member Fanny Gonzalez. Ms. Mitra Petoim. Council Member Fanny Gonzalez votes Petoim. Council Member Balcom. A uh, big yes for Mr. Petoim. Thank you. Council Member Balcom votes Petoim. Council Member Friedson. Ms. Petoim. Council Member Friedson votes Petoim. Council Member Glass. Ms. Petoim. Council Member Glass votes Petoim. That is unanimous. Congratulations, Ms. Petoim. And, and as was noted, uh, thank you to everybody who put themselves forward uh, for, uh, and in the unaffiliated independent category. Um, we have one last uh, vacancy to fill, and that is for a Republican member of the community. Uh, and I will open up the nominations. Uh, Councilmember Albernas. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to nominate Mr. Sean Bartley for this position. Um, Mr. Bartley, as he testified, is the principal of a law firm that uh, does general practice here in Montgomery County. But more importantly than that, he has uh, chosen to make Montgomery County home and truly uh, been a committed member civically of our community for a number of years. Uh, full disclosure, Mr. Bartley and I had the opportunity to serve together on the board for the Collaboration Council for Children, Youth, and Families, where he served as chair uh, for several years. Uh, during some difficult times in the history of our county as we were going through the recession when a number of nonprofit organizations were losing access to funding, um, Mr. Bartley, working with the Collaboration Council for Children, Youth, and Families and Montgomery County, were able to stand up Excel Beyond the Bell, which is a program that has extraordinary success. He has also serving currently um, as a member of the Maryland State Board of Education and our paths have also crossed in his tenure as the board chair for the Primary Care Coalition. And he was very active during the pandemic uh, in addressing a number of issues uh, um, facing our community, particularly in the healthcare space. Uh, Mr. Bartley also uh, has lived in various parts of the county, uh, served initially as a renter when he was first married, and now lives in the upper part of the county with his family. So uh, for those reasons and more, I am proud to uh, present Mr. Bartley. I do want to acknowledge that um, uh, David has had an extraordinary career as well, um, and we appreciate his very uh, excellent public service. And as Council Vice President Friedson noted, we are fortunate to have such a wealth of dedicated, committed, and experienced civic activists here in Montgomery County who are willing to serve in this capacity. Um, but I do uh, nominate Mr. Sean Bartley for this position. Thank you. Councilmember Mink. Thank you. Yes, um, I am glad to be seconding the nomination of Sean Bartley. Um, this, was, it, this was a difficult decision. Um, I gave it a lot of thought. Um, Mr. Winstead is also very qualified. Um, I, uh, I feel that Sean Bartley's uh, experience, his background, have, and uh, his policy direction and lens uh, is a good fit for our county and is a good fit for my district. Um, I want to go ahead and acknowledge that um, I know that there were some concerns about social media postings. I shared those concerns. Um, I have had you know follow-up conversations with uh, both of those candidates. Um, I have you know having spoken to folks who know uh, Mr. Bartley personally as well as. Uh, you know, hearing the testimony of our colleague, Council Member Albernaz, um, I feel uh, comfortable with uh, with Mr. Bartley, and uh, and I'm glad to second his nomination. I think that he would be an excellent addition to the planning board. Thank you, uh, Council Member Ludke. 
Thank you, Council President Glass, and thank you to everyone who has stepped up and put themselves in the running for this critical position to serve our county. It's my privilege to nominate David Winstead for the Republican Planning Board Commissioner seat now before us. Mr. Winstead is an incredibly accomplished candidate, uniquely qualified to excel on the planning board from day one. Um, it's not often, even in a place like Montgomery County with so many highly uh, educationally qualified individuals, that we can find someone like Mr. Winstead, who is an expert in multiple areas that would affect planning. He's a former state secretary of transportation, served under Democratic Governor Paris Glendening. He's also been deeply involved with entities like the Urban Land Institute, the General Services Administration. He served in a federal appointment position under President George W. Bush. He was uh, an appointment to the Maryland Aviation Commission. Um, and has been involved extensively in developing and promoting the master plan for bus rapid transit throughout our county. And this is also key. I am confident in Mr. Winstead's ability to be fair, thorough, and steady in his analysis and decision making of land use, parks, and planning issues before all of our communities. I think temperament, not just experience, is critical for this council in selecting permanent planning board commissioners given the difficulties and conflict of the last planning board. That puts us in the position we're in today of having to select new commissioners. And for that reason, I wholeheartedly support the nomination of David Winstead. Thank you, President Glass. Thank you. Councilmember Balcom. Thank you. I'd like to second the nomination for Mr. Winstead. Uh, not only does he have a very long, rich history in uh, a significant experience in housing and transportation, but he's also uh, has a long history of service to our community within Montgomery County. I met David Winstead uh, years ago uh, on the BRT task force, uh, where we spent every other Wednesday night uh, for a very long time, and, and I know him to be a very thoughtful a person and I think that he will serve us well so I second the nomination thank you thank you are there any other nominations not hearing any of the nominations are closed we'll open it up for general conversation uh, councilmember Fani Gonzalez I would like to highlight that when we interviewed mr. David Winstead I couldn't stop thinking about my former colleague Norman Dreyfus I think every planning board member needs a Norman Dreyfus, and he and I did not see eye to eye on every issue, but he was somebody which, with such deep knowledge that you just need somebody like that to balance out uh, views and, and tempers. And, and, um, and I know I already talked about Mary was Harley with Mitra, but I have to say David and Norman, you know, that's a match. And, and I think that's very important. So I will be voting for him. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I will just add that uh, I'm going to be supporting uh, Mr. Bartley. And this is a tough decision because I think both individuals are extremely uh, qualified. And when I look at the planning board and the makeup of the planning board, uh, I want to share just some of my thought processes. I'm looking for a mix of experiences individuals who are in government, have government experience, planning experience, development experience, but I'm also looking for individuals who have civic leadership experience, who don't come from uh, any of these avenues, so to speak. And the totality of, of today's nominations and selections uh, for me reflect that, uh, the mix of the best of our abilities. Um, and one other thing I do want to share is that when I voted last year for the temporary appointments, I voted and stated that I intended them to be temporary and I appreciate everybody stepping up in that temporary role. Uh, but it was a commitment I made regardless of who was ultimately appointed last year, that they were temporary and I fulfilled my commitment to making sure that they were temporary. Um, and so today, uh, right now, uh, between these two individuals, I appreciate both of their wealth of experiences. Um, but in the grand scope of things, I think having a mix of insider and outsider perspective on the planning board is important as well. Uh, Councilmember Jawanda. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with those sentiments that we need a diversity of all types on the planning board, geographic, life experience, uh, different types of civic leadership. 
Um, and, you know, I will note that uh, uh, Mr. Bartley, I think, is in our mid or upper part of the county now, um, if I remember correctly. And uh, as a, that's important, too. Uh, and I think uh, in between two, you know, obviously on the Republican choice, this is a no, no surprise, there's no, everyone's a Democrat up here, you know, various, various ranges. <laughs> but uh, you're not going to agree with anybody all the time. Michelle Jawando will tell you that. <laughs> but you want people that have a diversity of experiences, temperament. Um, and I think in this case, while we, these are all the qualified people at this point, um, I think Mr. Bartley would be a better choice. I also think, you know, that obviously racial ethnic, ethnic diversity matters um, in our county and uh, we're going to be appointing three of the five members today and we'll see what we do with the other positions but I do think it's important to uh, take that into account today in this moment as well so that's another reason I'll be supporting Mr. Bartley. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Not seeing any other requests to speak. Madam Clerk will you call the roll? Councilmember Lukey. Winstead. Councilmember Lukey votes Winstead. Councilmember Mink. Mr. Bartley. Councilmember Mink vote, votes Bartley. Councilmember Sales. Bartley. Councilmember Sales votes Bartley. Councilmember Albernoz. Uh, Mr. Bartley. Councilmember Albernoz votes Bartley. Cou Councilmember Juwando. <laughs> Sean Bartley. Councilmember Juwando votes Bartley. Councilmember Katz. Mr. Winstead. Councilmember Katz votes Winstead. Council Member Stewart. Abstain. Council Member Stewart abstains. Council Member Fanny Gonzalez. David Winstead. Council Member Fanny Gonzalez votes Winstead. Council Member Balcom. David Winstead. Council Member Balcom votes Winstead. Council Member Friedson. Mr. Winstead. Council Member Friedson votes Winstead. Council Member Glass. Mr. Bartley. Council Member Glass votes Bartley. It's five to five. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So this is the first time we have undergone this process. Uh, and it is five for Mr. Bartley, five for Mr. Winstead, and one abstention. Are there any comments anyone would like to make? Uh, Council Member Stewart. Thank you, Council President. Um, I will change my vote to Mr. Bartley. Um, I, I first abstained um, because originally I was going to vote for Mr. Bartley, um, but did have concerns, as some of my colleagues have pointed out, and um, did reflect on them. This was, as with other votes today, this was a, a tough decision. I respect very much my colleagues up here who are supporting Mr. Bartley, and at the end of the day, I will support him and believe that, um, and hope that he works to build trust with all in our community and um, brings respect and honor to the position on the planning board. Thank you, Councilmember Stewart. Not seeing any additional comments. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Councilmember Ludke. Winstead. Councilmember Ludke votes Winstead. Councilmember Mink. Bartley. Councilmember Mink votes Bartley. Councilmember Sales. Bartley. Councilmember Sales votes Bartley. Councilmember Albernoz. Uh, Sean Bartley. Councilmember Albernoz votes Bartley. Councilmember Jawando. Sean Bartley. Councilmember Jawando votes Bartley. Councilmember Katz. Mr. Winstead. Councilmember Katz votes Winstead. Councilmember Stewart. Bartley. Councilmember Stewart votes Bartley. Councilmember Fanny Gonzalez. Winstead. Councilmember Fanny Gonzalez votes Winstead. Councilmember Balcom. Uh, David Winstead. Councilmember Balcom votes Winstead. Councilmember Friedson. Mr. Winstead. Councilmember Friedson votes Winstead. Councilmember Glass. Mr. Bartley. Councilmember Glass votes Bartley. Mr. Bartley received six votes. Mr. Winstead received five votes. Okay. Congratulations to Mr. Bartley. Um, congratulations to my colleagues uh, for working through this, this process. Um, I see Chair Zients in the audience. Congratulations to your three new colleagues. Um, and, you know, I, I, I will just end on this, that this has been an open and transparent process as it was intended. This is the first time we've undergone the process like this, and so fate should strike that uh, we have rules of procedure that navigate us through that, but it was a deliberative process 
Uh, everybody who was selected is extremely well qualified. Everybody who was nominated was extremely well qualified, uh, and the public deserves to know that. And so this conversation is healthy, not just for this body, not just for the planning board, but for democracy as a whole. And Councilmember Balcom has a comment. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, piggyback on that. I. It's such an honor to serve with you all, and I just wanted to say that I think that this was a, a process that I was a little anxious going into uh, because we had to put it all out there in public, and I just wanted to say thank you to my colleagues for um, for making this happen um, and, and for doing it in such a uh, respectful way. So thank you. Council Vice President Friedson. Yeah, thank you so much to colleagues. We tried to figure out a way to do a process that would be collegial, but would also be transparent, and I think we accomplished that. And I think we have a process uh, that works for moving forward. Uh, we were deliberative, but we were respectful, and we were fortunate to reiterate that we had a lot of really good candidates to choose from in these uh, various three seats. I look forward to the next two seats and to redoing this process again for a chair and for another member come June. And I hope that we will begin uh, reaching out to uh, uh, qualified candidates very soon because uh, ultimately we hope to have at least as good of uh, a talent pool as we had uh, and at least as difficult as decisions as I hope that we will have to make and at least as collegial and transparent a process as I think we had here. Uh, today. So appreciate uh, all colleagues, appreciate all of the applicants, appreciate the interim members who stepped up to serve and to, uh, to uh, lead the organization through an, a, a critical time and I look forward to continuing to work together with the Planning Commission and the staff to advance the shared goals and interests of our community. Councilmember Albernaz. Thank you. Um, I just want to once again thank those that applied. It takes a lot to put yourself out there. Uh, you get out in the newspapers, suddenly you start getting social media posts from people you've never met before. Um, every one of us here can sort of understand uniquely what each of you have experienced since you have been willing to put your names forward. Um, we hope that, as Council Vice President Friedson noted, that because this is a very important process for our public, that this encourages others to apply and does not in any way dissuade. Um, we will, as we did here today, um, acknowledge the outstanding work of our public, of the folks willing to serve in this capacity, and um, just wanted to mention that um, because it's really important uh, that we get another pool equally as qualified as the one that we just received. Uh, and if anybody's out there that has any questions regarding the process, please feel free to share those with us, uh, and we will respond to those as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Jawando. Thank you. Uh, I also want to thank all the applicants and I want to thank uh, my colleagues for, you know, we started this council session calling for more transparency. We had a very robust, transparent conversation that day and subsequent days. And on this issue, uh, we've come to a good process. Uh, and I want to thank our staff, our central staff. Um, to, I usually thank the seatmate to my left. I'm going to take my seatmates to the right, um, who, who also, as part of this process, we had to change how many votes it took to nominate someone even to get them to this point, and they had to do that work and work with us. And I want to thank Ms. Michelson and, and the entire team, our clerk especially, uh, Ms. Rupp, uh, for doing that. Um, and to uh, Mr. Hendricks and Ms., Ms., uh, Mrs. Podium and uh, to Mr. Bartley, we expect great things from you. Uh, and none of those shenanigans we saw before. And, um, and we know you all will do a great job and, and appreciate everyone for applying. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, appreciate the collaborative comments, uh, the spirit in which we entered this process. And we will be entering this process again uh, in a few weeks' time uh, as we look to appoint to, uh, to fill the appointment of two individuals, uh, one of which being the all-important chair. Uh, and so with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>